I see. So Marquess Rogner will be absent as well. I take it this means House High Arms will be the only one of the four great houses in attendance. Would that it were different. For all of his faults, Marquess Rogner is a man of principle. Which makes his continuing house arrest for his actions during the Civil War all the more unfortunate. One can't be too careful with a man who can lead his own militia. Though compared to the Governor General of Crossbell, he's a mere child playing with toys. Useless. Sorry. Just idle thoughts. By the by, what kind of man is this Marquis Ballad? Every bit the man the rumors make him out to be. Foolhardy and greedy, but dangerously savvy when it comes to matters of personal gain. I can't even imagine how his presence will disrupt our conference. And I'm unfortunate enough to be his caretaker. <laughs> well, with your father there, I can't imagine he'll be too much of a terror. Marquis High Arms tends to have a sobering effect on people. Very true. My father does not suffer fools gladly. But after the recent incidents in Crossbell and Sutherland, there's no telling what to expect. You would do well to exercise caution yourself. <laughs> you hardly need to remind me. Besides, I'm going to be among people I trust. That's right. I suppose the conference does overlap with the branch campus's field exercises. Something else for me to look forward to. It will be a pleasure to see Class One's former rivals reunited after all. Lord Eusus, your visitor has arrived. Ah, uh, yes. Let her in. Right this way, young lady. <laughs> Thanks! Going, Eusis. Long time no see. <laughs> Hello, Milliam. You're a little late. Hey, it's not my fault it takes so long to get approved. Why do I need to get permission every time I want to see you anyway? The reason should be obvious, given each of our positions. Yeah. H hey, dodging's no fair. Sometimes I fear you'll never learn. You're 15 now, aren't you? Would it kill you to act a bit more lady li Lammy! Think fast! Oh, hell. <laughs> gotcha! Get off me! You can't just jump on someone in an outfit like that. Oh, you want to compare fashion notes, Mr. Fancy Haircut? But fine, if it keeps you from getting any more wrinkles. Just get off. <laughs> now this is good! Every bit as tasty as the pancakes Tilly and I had earlier. You know, the children in town are starting to act more like you. Why do I get the feeling you've been teaching them? Well, we have been hanging out a little. Every time I come visit you, I get to know them a little better. They're all really good kids. Hmm. That they are. So what if she was artificially created? She's just like any other girl. Aside from her complaints about not getting taller anyway. Something on your mind? <laughs> Not at all. So, how are things on your end? As for me, my schedule remains unchanged. All right. Even with all the crazy stuff that's happened, I should be good to go. <laughs> are you excited? You and me going on vacation. <laughs> I suppose the place is so pretty that it would feel like a vacation, even if we're walking into what is essentially a carnival of villainy. <laughs> You've got a way with words, Eusis. <sighs> I just wish I had access to more information, even if most of the classified stuff is just about nobles and the Bracer Guild. I wouldn't worry about it. That's standard operating procedure for the Intelligence Division. Though, I imagine your status as an Ironblood gets you more leeway than others. Still, if I had the same clearance as Lecter, I could be so much more helpful to everyone from Class 7. Reen, Elisa, and Machias seem to have it especially tough. Vee and Sarah, though? 
I think they can take care of themselves. You don't have to worry about taking care of any of us. Besides, the fact that you're a part of Class 7 means so much more to us than any political favor you could offer. Uh. <laughs> I'm giving you another hug. No, you are not. Wait, what's that sound? Ah, it must be Class 7 related. I wonder what happened. No way! Could it be? Been a while, Eusis. Huh? Oh, and Milliam is with you too. Gaius? Gaius? going at it. I figured Needhog would be good, but the other guys are no slouches themselves. Betcha they'll give us a pretty good fight. They've both been in shambles ever since the Civil War. The dragon lost its head. And as for the other group, well... <laughs> Guess this makes it a fight neither side can afford to lose. I'd like to have a battle with a certain someone myself. You wouldn't be talking about little old me now, would you? Easy now, Blitz. I'm unarmed, see? I should be the one on edge here. Sorry, but I'd rather not take any chances. Not with someone who can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Lord Balder. Aw, oh, lighten up! Can't you relax around an old drinking buddy? <laughs> I think Daddy might be the only person who could drink with you and not be nervous. That said, this is pretty weird. I saw you and Uncle Balder kill each other with my own eyes. And now you're here. Does this have something to do with that cool purple shadow thing? <laughs> Who can say? Seriously, though, you don't really want to start a fight in a place like this, do you? The two of you against little old me? I'd have zero chance of winning. <sighs> <laughs> You're real funny, old man. But I get it. We're all just observers this time. So, once you get things squared away with your business, come pay us a visit. We'll be waiting. Excuse us, Jaeger King. <laughs> really had me sweating there. Old man like me would stand a chance against all that youthful exuberance. Don't you think? <laughs> I'm just talking to myself. Don't let it spook you. The Colonel, your dad, took good care of me back in the day. Introduced me to my favorite brand of smokes. <laughs> By the way, I meant to thank you for taking care of Fee. Chasing us from battlefield to battlefield's all well and good, but raising that kid right is what really matters. Even if you're practically a kid yourself. Whew. 
Yikes. That was just like three years ago. Colonel. <laughs> I haven't heard that in a while. Bloody Shirley. No, the Sanguine Ogre. She had to have noticed me too. Ah, oh, I've been off the front lines for too long. Meanwhile, Fee's been picking up skill after skill. I'm really starting to feel my age. Wait, what am I saying? I'm only 27. Well, almost 28, but either way, I'm too young to be old. <clears throat> okay, Sarah, focus. We've got two of the strongest Jaeger cores, the dragons and these Jaegers in purple, battling it out. One way or another, things are gonna come to a head, for me and for the kids. And you know, even if he is a far cry from the Viscount, I have to admit, the Jaeger King is a real fox. Mm. Well, someone's early for a change. <laughs> Basking in its glory? Even I was surprised when I first saw it. Yeah. I hear there's another one in a place called Nord. Yes. Just about the same size, too. Even though it's a very different shape. Wait. Is something bothering you? No. I don't sense any power within this thing. It's nothing but a shell. Just makes me wonder where the insides went. Insides? Sorry we're late. Have you been a good girl, Duvali? Took you too long enough. I said sorry. Oh, the almighty conflagration is with you. My, are we interrupting something intimate? Don't even joke about that. I would never. Especially not with some lazy, irresponsible bum like him. <laughs> never is right. No man could ever sway a little lord's pet like her. Well, aside from maybe that Ashen kid, isn't he your type? Oh, dear me. Uh, absolutely not! And what do you mean, lord's pet? If anything, Mick Byrne, you don't have enough respect for the Anguis. <laughs> I guess that makes two of us. It's you. It has been a while, fool. When was the last time? The Crossbell incident? <laughs> I believe so. Though we've all been busy roaming across the continent, so I won't hold it against you. With that, all of us who were stationed to the west are here. Except Shirley, that is. Yeah, the crazy ogre chick's off getting a read on the front lines. The thought of her off on her own scares me a little. But we have preparations to make. Before our beautiful and proud lord arrives. There's no need for that. <gasps> My lord. <laughs> I didn't expect you to arrive so early. M My lord. <sighs> I'm so glad you're here. <sighs> I didn't think I would get to see you so soon. <laughs> Nor did I. I thought we had several days left to wait. Did something change among the Anguis? Yes. The Oathbreaker and Lady Mariabel decided to take on Arteria. And the Professor completed the final Ion earlier than planned. <laughs> Sounds like he's been working hard. <laughs> he probably didn't like what happened to his last one. Ah, Campanella and McBurn. How long has it been? About a year? <laughs> Sounds about right. Still wearing that clunky helmet of yours, I see. There's a nice breeze right now, so why don't you take it off? McBurn! How dare you say that to our lord? <laughs> now, now, Duvalee. He's no subject of mine. 
Since we're ahead of schedule, why don't we have a little duel? If you can manage to tear this helm from my head, I'll be able to feel the lovely breeze you mentioned. Nah, <laughs> I'm good. Not because I think I'll lose, but because I don't think I can actually win. Just like all of our other fights. What? <laughs> You're right. Although, the outcomes may have been different had you taken my sword lessons more seriously. Damn it. Don't treat me like I'm Luve. <laughs> Just what is their relationship? Now let us begin. The third of our experiments to reclaim the Phantasmal Blaze Plan. To determine whether or not a vessel can gain power through combat.
I'll go first. I'm Muse Egret. I've transferred from military finance to join you here in class 7. It's truly a pleasure to meet you all. Ash Carbide, transferring from combat tactics. Got no plans to make friends here. But nice to meet you, I guess.
Stand, bow. <laughs>